Hello. Hey, what is up? What are you reading? I am Rhiannon and today I'm coming at you with another book tag because apparently I can't do anything else. So, this is the second time I'm filming this because the other day I bought a camera. It is a Canon PowerShot S5 IS and it's, it's my baby. And I tried to film it, this video, on here and it worked. It was great. The audio... The audio on here is fantastic. The footage left a little to be desired. So I'm gonna do some tinkering, see if I can't get the footage, like the quality to be a little bit better. I don't think I can. To be fair, this is from like 2007 and my phone is from 2018 <laughs> or 2017. So I wasn't really expecting this to be better than my phone, but I did expect it to be a little bit better than it was. But the photos turned out pretty okay. The photos are pretty good. So I'm gonna start taking some photos on my camera. Why did I buy a camera that from like years and years ago instead of just buying a new one? This was $49 and I can't afford a $700 camera. So we're practicing with this and then if I enjoy using it, I will upgrade. If I do not, then I have a $49 camera for the rest of my life, you know? But today, in case you couldn't have guessed by the uh, giant cup of coffee at the beginning of the video, I'm doing the coffee book tag. So I obviously have with me a cup of coffee. I'm going to put it here. Before I do though, it says scrum diddly umptious. And it's the best thing I own. That's not entirely true. There's like two things on this shelf alone that are the best things I own, so. I've got my handy dandy laptop back out. I do have a sticker of Jake Peralta screaming. My sister bought it for me because she's the best. The tag was originated by a YouTuber called Bangadi Bangs. I think that's how you say it. Um, but I saw it on Caddy Tastic's channel because of course I did. Um, so I am going to just read the questions to you and then answer them like I have every other tag. And then at the end of this video, I do also have some questions that I am going to answer like I did last time because I think that's fun. I have another four questions, so I'll just do all of them again. But like I said, if by any chance it does get like a lot. I won't obviously do all of them, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So the first one is Black. Name a series that's tough to get into, but has hardcore fans. When I filmed it earlier, I actually picked City... City of Bones by Cassandra Clare because I personally didn't enjoy the first three books as much as I enjoyed The Infernal Devices. I think The Infernal Devices is way better, but I also know a lot of people who, if I say anything negative about this series, are going to come from my head on a platter, and I don't want that. But I do think that it can be a bit tricky to get into. I think it's a decent story. It's definitely not one of my favorites. The Infernal Devices was much better. Um, I'm trying to think what else would be a good example for this question. I guess we could also go with <laughs> Throwing a Glass by Sarah J Maas. Crazy fans, but again, not really that hard to get into. It depends. Here's the thing about this question. Reading is quite subjective, and what I may find difficult to get into, others may not, and vice versa. So, it's my opinion. Number two, Peppermint Mocha. We don't have that in Australia, I don't think. We might at Starbucks. I don't have a Starbucks near me. If I want a Starbucks, I have to get on a plane for an hour. And I wish that was a joke, but it's not. Name a book that gets more popular during the winter or festive time of year. So I don't have a book, although I do see Harry Potter get more popular around Christmas. I think because he's a YouTuber and I can't remember which one does Merry Harry Christmas to you or something. So Harry does get a bit more popular around that time of year, but I do own a book and I didn't realize when I bought it because it was on sale and it was a cute little children's hardback. And then I got it home and a week later, I very foolishly realized that this book is the first book in a three part series, I believe. There might be more. I'm honestly not 100% sure, but the first book in the three part series of this, the, which is the first book that inspired the movie Rise of the Guardians. So this one is Nicholas St. North and the Battle of the Nightmare King. So this one is obviously, I'm guessing, follows Santa. And then on the back it says like the next one is about the Easter Bunny. E. Esther Bunnymond and the Warrior Eggs at the Earth's Core. And then book three is Toothiana, Queen of the Tooth Fairy Armies. That book is going to give me a panic attack. It is by William Joyce and Laura Geringer with Ill Illuminations by William Joyce. Double shot of espresso. Name a book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. I, this book shook me. There's a part at the end of this book. I screamed. I don't know why I didn't see it coming, but I didn't see it coming. And I read it and I screamed and I was on the edge of my seat for this entire book because so much happens. It is the small, sorry, it is the smallest book in the series, but so much happens in this book. 
and it is crazy. Starbucks, name a book you see everywhere. No, you know what book I see everywhere? Every single secondhand bookstore I go into has at least one copy of one of the books from the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. I don't know why. It's a very good series from what I remember of it. I only read like the first two and a half books, but this was good. But every time I go into a secondhand bookstore, at least one of the books in the series is there. It's normally always Blood Promise. Like I see Blood Promise in a bookstore a lot, but please go adopt a Vampire Academy from your local bookstore. Show us some love. Number six, that hipster coffee shop. Give a book by an indie author a shout out. I don't think I, oh, I do. And I cannot show you properly. Hold on. You know what would have been easier than what I just did going to Goodreads, but Queendom of the Seven Lakes by A.B. Endicott. That is a self-published book and I would know, I read it, it's really good. She has sequels and another series I believe that she's working on. And Alice is adorable and lovely and I love everything about her. She's so kind. She sent me, she sent me I haven't burnt them yet, but she sent me some candles from actually a Tasmanian um, candle company and they smell like the different families are in the book. So we have the royal family, Vertak family, Catan family, and Ardrin. I can't say anything in books. Ardrin family. And I haven't burnt them yet, but they do smell really nice. She also sent me a bookmark and some bath salts and it was just really sweet and really nice. Oh, she's so great. I love her. Seven. Oops, I accidentally got decaf. Name a book you're expecting more from. Don't come for me. If you're gonna kill a main character, kill him. Eight, the perfect blend. Name a book or series that was bitter and sweet, but ultimately satisfying. For that, I'm going to pick The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee because it has some really sweet moments, but it also has some really sad moments, but ultimately it was satisfying, which is ultimately what the question was asking, was what is a book that is happy and sad but satisfying and this is happy and sad and satisfying so so that is the end of the tag i still have like a whole cup of coffee here that's fun i can drink that later now that i have completed the tag i'm going to go on to the question portion of this video and i have another four like i said so the first question we have is from my dear friend naomi cabaret of words and she has asked Favorite part of being a bookstagrammer slash booktuber. I love getting to meet new people who have very similar interests to me. That was one of the first things I wanted to do when I started my bookstagram. So actually as I'm filming this, two days ago was my three year anniversary on bookstagram and I still need to do something about that because I haven't yet. Because someone set up her blog and Instagram on Anzac Day and that just seems disrespectful. So I'm not celebrating that day. I'm celebrating the day after and then I forgot because I had work and assignments, but tangent. <laughs> But I've been doing this for three years and in those three years I've met some incredibly beautiful people who I love dearly and to death and I am so thankful to have gotten to know, know these people and I've made so many beautiful friends through Bookstagram in the last three years and I'm hoping to do the same through Booktube. I always wanted actually to do Booktube, not blogging, but I was always a bit too nervous to get in front of the camera and never really had anywhere to film now that I live in my own place, I do. So that's really nice. But one of my other favorite things about Bookstagram and booktubing is the opportunities I've had and the doors that have been opened to me because of this. I've not only been sent books for review, I've been contacted by people like Alice who have self-published their own books. I have received books from publishers, from people who publish my favorite stories. And I never, ever, ever, ever in a million years thought I'd be able to contact someone from Bloomsbury and say, hi, I'd like to request a copy of this arc. And, and someone they would go, yeah, sure. Like, that to me is absolutely crazy. And I, and I never in a million years thought that that would happen to me. My lovely friend, Julia Jean asked, how are you finding your new camera? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying learning how to use it. I haven't really had a good sit down and practice because I've been so busy with school, but I've enjoyed learning how to use it so far. I'm enjoying the idea of having a camera. I'd really like a better one so I can film on it so I can use my phone for stuff like this. But as you can see, I'm back to filming on my phone, so I'm not doing too well, but we're, we're getting there. It's a work in progress. It's just, I'm very slow. Kara's Bookish Life asked, if you had a million dollars deposited to you right now, what would you do first? I would buy my family a house. Then I would put money away to pay for my student debts. I would also then flee the state, donate to a charity, and also travel because I want to go to America to meet my best friend, one of my best friends, and I want to go to London to see the brilliant original Phantom of the Opera. 
so I would like to do that. And then my dear darling Penguins are Awesome 97 asked, what Bone Season cover is your favorite? I had to ask him if he meant like in general or if he just meant like new or old, he meant in general. So this, this is, this is tricky. I am going to have to say, I am obviously a huge fan of the new covers. I think they're really nice. I like the silver writing. I like the, kind of looks like an eye. I guess with like the shattered glass and the poppy in the middle. I think that's really, really pretty. This cover, and I also really like the original My Morbida paperback because I like Paige in London on it. I think that looks really nice. I like that the little, f that the poppy is still like there, like it is on the, I have the trade paperback and the hardback up there, but I'm not pulling them off the shelf. I've got a big enough mess around me as it is. I really like this. And then I obviously, my friend found me this. And so now my collection is nearly complete, but this is the trade paperback of the Bone Season. I obviously still really enjoy the original covers as well, but I like all of them. I think all of the covers, old and new, are beautiful. And I actually cannot pick a favorite. I do, I like aspects of all of them. But anyway, thank you for tuning in to this week's video of Crazy Rhiannon Time. God, I love coffee. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving me a like and maybe a cheeky comment telling me if you like coffee or not. And if not, what do you drink instead? Let me know in the comment section below. I now have to leave and get ready as it is four o'clock and I need to get dressed so I can go have dinner with my friends. So thank you for tuning in. I don't know why I've decided to get closer, but hello. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Happy reading.